Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my Friday message. My special guest this week is Julius Wilder, Assistant Professor of Medicine and Assistant Professor of Sociology. Dr. Wilder is a hepatologist and gastroenterologist and the chair of the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Anti-Racism Committee in the Department of Medicine. We'll be talking about the recent rise in colon cancer among young people, persistently high rates among communities of color, and how he and Duke are advocating for better prevention and treatment. But before we meet Julius, I'd like to share a few updates. In light of the sharp decline in COVID-19 cases and severity, Duke University will be easing its COVID vaccination requirements effective May 11th. Faculty, staff, and students within Duke Health are still required to receive the primary series of COVID vaccinations, but booster vaccinations are no longer required. This includes the School of Medicine and Nursing, the Duke University Health System, the Private Diagnostic Clinic, and the Duke Health Integrated Practice. Despite the change in protocols, I still encourage all of you to get up to date in your vaccinations and boosters, especially those at higher risk for more serious infection. In fact, just this week, the FDA authorized a second booster with the bivalent vaccine containing the original as well as the BA4-5 spike protein for those over 65 and those who are immunocompromised. And in June, the FDA will be considering which variants should be considered this fall. Congratulations to Amy Gladfelter, who was elected this week to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. She just joined the faculty in our Department of Cell Biology as a Duke Science and Technology Scholar last week, and it was one of four new AAAS members from Duke this year. Congratulations also to Nicole Kalakis, Distinguished Professor of Neurology, Neurobiology, and Cell Biology, and Chief of the Division of Parkinson's and Movement Disorders. She's been awarded the 2023 Stanley J. Kossmeyer Award in the American Society of Clinical Investigation. The Kossmeyer Award honors outstanding achievements in advancing knowledge and mentoring future generations of life science researchers. Nicole will be giving the award lecture at this year's ASCI AAP meeting. April is Celebrate Diversity Month, and I want to remind you that the School of Medicine and across Duke Health, we celebrate diversity 365 days a year. Our diversity is our strength and integral to our excellence. The different backgrounds, perspectives, and experiences each of you bring to Duke make this the rich, vibrant place it is. I invite you to join me in honoring our diversity through action by working for equity, inclusion, and a sense of belonging. I'd like to remind you that today is the deadline to submit nominations for the inaugural Dean Staff Awards. These newly launched annual awards are in four categories to honor exemplary staff who support the School of Medicine's missions and values. I encourage you to recognize your outstanding colleagues by submitting nominations. I look forward to learning more about all of our nominees, and I'm excited about this new opportunity to celebrate their extraordinary contributions. And now please join me in conversation with Julius. So Julius, thank you for joining me today. Certainly. It's so great to see you. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. It's an honor to be here. So there's been good and bad news lately around colon cancer. What is going on? Yeah, you know, certainly there has been a sort of mixed bag of things with colon cancer recently. When you look overall, we have seen improvement in terms of the actual incidence and prevalence of colon cancer. Uh, we know that has a lot to do with what we've done in terms of screening. And we've seen a decrease in terms of colon cancer deaths as well but those benefits have not been equal. You know, mm -hmm. Certain populations, um, unfortunately, particularly communities of color, we've not seen the same benefit in terms of the degree of improvement in terms of colon cancer. And also, we do see more colon cancer in younger populations as well. Well, that has been a headline lately. And so what do you think is going on, particularly in that young population? Yeah, you know, we're still doing some research to really understand exactly what's causing this. We know probably diet, uh, things like obesity, uh, the prevalence of alcoholism and alcohol consumption in, in those populations, particularly younger populations, yeah. may be contributing factors. We're seeing obesity really show up in children now, and how that translates into colon cancer earlier on in life is unclear as well. Um, but we think those are some of the factors that are probably contributing to why we see it so much, you know, since such early ages. Yeah. So I noticed you have an appointment in the Department of Sociology. How does that inform your work? You know, um, it really does help me understand the impact of social determinants of health. 
You know, so when I approach my patients, when I think about how I treat my patients, when I reflect on the best ways to treat my patients, you know, I have to take into consideration the various factors, you know, status, their income, their education, how all these factors contribute to their ability to be healthy and live healthy lives and have access to the healthcare resources that they need. So certainly when you talk about some of the statistics in colon cancer, it does highlight real issues in health disparities. How do you use that information, whether you're thinking about prevention, treatment, engagement? Mm -hmm. You know, we use it quite directly in my work. You know, mm -hmm. as a medical sociologist, I actually study the impact of social determinants of health on various health outcomes, including colon cancer. And, and specifically here at Duke, we actually have a number of initiatives and grants that we are working on right now to address this issue. We have a grant where we're working with the community to understand the impact of non-invasive tests and how well we can leverage things like a fit testing, um, right. which allows us to understand how we can get that in the communities and get people access to some type of colon cancer screening. And then we also have another grant around health literacy, where we are working with the church community here in the Durham area, and actually in the southeastern United States, to think about how we can do a better job of communicating and educating populations about the importance of colon cancer screening. So you've touched on this a little bit, but obviously you advocate for communities of color, particularly at the intersection of health yeah. disparities and, and our communities. Why is that so important for you? Yeah, you know, that idea of how you can build bridges with the community is so important and building that trust really helps us as physicians, helps us as a health system do a better job of providing care for the community. And as, a, and as an African-American male who's a physician, who understands you know, what it's been like for this community, the barriers that exist within that community, you know, I think I'm an important tool in terms of how I can be a bridge between the health system and the community and sort of bringing us together so we can ensure better outcomes for everyone. So I can say I knew you when. That's right, you did. Uh, <laughs> when you're beginning your career. That's right. And I'm so proud of the work that you're doing and the work that's being done at Duke with our, within our community and thank you for all of it. Well, thank you and thank you for your support. And thanks to everybody for all that you do and have a great weekend.